uh, and then we will get into uh, the subject on the local church. So uh, uh, would somebody like to lead us in prayer, please? Good morning. Good morning, Kennedy. Okay, uh, Dinesh, uh, would you be able to lead us in prayer? Sure, uh, Pastor. Sure, sure. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir, Father. For this time, Father. It's your will, Father. If we thought your will, nothing will happen, Father. I submit the entire course of this semester, Father. We especially today course, Father. For about churches, Father, different kind of churches, ministries. To this course, we are get to know what a kind of name ministries, uh, what kind of uh, Lord God uh, churches in our show now to establish a good um, biblical church. Uh, what are the rules, rules and innovation? What are the rules and responsibilities? Uh, what are the different kinds of um, speaking to, to Bible truth? Uh, focusing on Bible studies, Father. Help us uh, get uh more uh, wisdom father give us more knowledge of what uh, to, to the church father uh, i submit um uh, pastor uh who uh we know my hand father to her he, he, you are helping us speaking through her in order to gain knowledge father uh, without any disturbance, um, uh, without uh, any uh, external disturbance, may your uh, help uh, needed, Father, to concentrate, Father. I submit um, uh, as a uh, pastor answering uh, for good health, Father. I submit uh, all the students my and white hand father hope uh, able one is doing well and your cares for them uh, the i once again uh, submit this uh, entire session in uh, my hand father on uh, also day father may your control be over us father thank you jesus christ uh, thank you father I submit in the right hand, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh, for uh, praying and covering all of us uh, with, with those prayers. Um, so let's uh, get into today's uh, chapter. Uh, so far, uh, I believe that you know, we have been enjoying what we are learning because um, this topic is very practical. Uh, even if we are not pastors of a church, uh, whether we are serving in the capacity of volunteers uh, or maybe at the moment we're not uh, serving at all. You know, there are so many things that we can actually understand, we can relate to uh, and uh, we could we could think of uh, improvements that that we can make as we serve or if we um, are going to sign up to serve you know what what are the things to bear in mind so it's beneficial for everyone uh, the those in leadership and those who are serving in some other manner so we've done uh, we've covered till chapter 4 uh, and we've seen how every church goes through growth it goes through phases uh, and um, someone who is a leader must know how to lead that change and uh, prepare the church to adapt as uh, the transition takes place so uh, now what we're going to talk about today is we will touch on what makes a local church very strong okay so before we get into uh, the the key points that are presented in this chapter for us 
I think I touched on vision uh, in the last class, but uh, I just would like to know your thoughts. What do you think makes a local church very strong? From your personal experience, we've all been part of churches. So, yes. Can I, can I say that? Yes, yes, Avni, please. Uh, what I personally feel is uh, the leadership uh, with the vision and uh, the leadership which is rooted in the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. More than everything else can make the local church because when the truth is shared and uh, people receive that truth, and when uh, more of people are walking in obedience to the word, mm. the work of the Lord is uh, more uh, powerfully manifested in that church. And the local church is strengthened by the truth of God's word through the leadership. Mm. That's what mm. I feel. Mm. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Avni. That's a key. So a uh, strong leadership, leadership rooted in God's word uh, and the people also following the same thing. And when their lives are established in the word, that makes a strong local church. Great. Wonderful. Um, uh, eh, would anyone else want to add to that? What do you feel are uh, the keys? Yeah, uh, I would uh, feel um, the truth uh, 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 is true. Along with the truth, uh, uh, existing uh, souls are vision has to be many souls, uh, uh, each out many souls, bring many souls, then develop uh, um, uh, uh, ministering uh, under uh, extreme extreme uh, believers uh, motivating uh, different uh, ministries uh, like a church uh, has to um, reach out uh, to the local areas where, uh, where the gospel has to reach the world uh, to that many souls mm. we have to um, um, uh, no matter all our old uh, churches, we have to not concentrate all old old churches. We have to concentrate how many souls we have won, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, how many so existing believers we have um, co concentrate under ministries. Mm. It is just a key point. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. So uh, Dinesh is talking about the mission of the church and how the church should be alive and active, um, walking in that purpose that God has given the church. So that makes a strong local church. So great. Wonderful. So um, that's an addition. Uh, Kennedy says accountable leadership. So along with strong leadership, uh, vision that the, the leadership has, accountability. Right, accountable leadership that makes a lo strong local church. Any more, any more thoughts from your experience, ma'am? Yes, yes, Rupa, please share. Uh, a church should be a place where people should feel. You can hear me. Yes, yes, Rupa, very clearly. Okay, with people should feel accepted, welcomed, part of a family, God's family, and where they are nurtured and and where there is a discipline of sharing and also growing together. I think that makes it like a family church. So like God's family, when we connect with each other in God's love and character to each other, I think there the local church will be very strong. The, le the leader should be able to identify the strengths in the people and uh, care, give them the responsibility. And also, it should be a beautiful thing. People should feel like coming back and uh, connecting to it, not like a place of politics or uh, 
bickering and all i think this is possible in small groups i think thank you ma'am yeah thank you rupa wonderful so uh, uh, church should be a family where people feel belong accepted welcome um, and um, what was the other point you said rupa we should be able to identify the strengths yeah. of the people yes 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 so uh, the strengths of the people also should be identified that way everyone is uh, contributing people are growing together so that's what rupa said so uh, i mean uh, I, i'm just as a, as you all are sharing uh, i can paint the picture of a perfect church if all this is part of the church it's it's perfect okay samuel is adding to that and he says a local church is strong when the church's values and practices are based on god's word and is uncompromised at the same time god's mercy kindness love are most evident okay yeah thank you samuel so uh, again basing the standards of the church on the standard of god's word uh, and also the um uh, like uh, the character of god in his mercy kindness love right all that being demonstrated in the church through the church that makes it uh, strong so yes all of this makes a strong local church and uh, you know we will study from uh um how do i put this like a pastor's perspective you you could put it that way right also uh pastor sharing in in this chapter about some of the key things that make a strong local church strong not just in the sense of the community right the sense of community is very important uh, that needs to be established but you know there are other aspects that we must consider when we talk about a strong local church um uh, you know uh the revelation of god's word then um good leadership um then vision right and when we're talking about fulfilling the vision of the church there's also the continuity element to it okay so we establish a strong local church and it is established for a long time impacting generations so with that perspective in mind we will look at some of the key things that make a local church um, very strong in the last class we touched on the point where we said that a god given vision is very important uh, yeah. and the the leader has to communicate it well to the church and it must be communicated um often enough so that you know people use this phrase you catch the vision okay everyone who's part of the church they catch the vision it's it's more than just uh something that they are aware of but they catch it they imbibe it and they know that they must live by it so uh, a strong leader with a strong vision and he communicates the vision in a clear way that will lead the people forward because uh, we saw the scripture in proverbs 29 18 which says that where there is no vision the people perish or in other words people become unproductive when we don't um, guide them in a certain direction okay so if you look at some of the translations uh, it says that where there is no vision people they throw off their restraints okay they just live any which way like energy is directed in every direction because they don't know where to go but when there is a vision when there is um a, a goal to uh, move towards then people will focus their energies uh, and and be moving in that direction so vision is very very important that would be the first thing now if any uh, of us have that in our hearts that okay i want to plant a church i think the first thing we need is a vision you know what what is god calling us to do what will this church be like what will be the key message that comes from the church so we have to pray and we have to get that vision from god then we also said strong leadership right we we said a strong leader who gives a strong vision now why is a strong leader important uh, we we talked about the fact that if the leader is not a uh, strong enough or if they don't lead by example then that can affect 
the people and re remember when we talked about the structures of uh, churches we said the ones that are large right uh, if you have a large congregation if a leader has you know some failure financially he fails or morally he fails in some other way uh, that will impact those many congregation members right and satan knows that so he would um, want leaders to fall he would want uh, leaders to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, like what do you say if they move into error then that's a benefit for uh, satan so we must be aware of it we discussed this when we talked about believers authority that we must not be uh, ignorant of the enemy's tactics and when it comes to the local church you know obviously the enemy would want the leader to fall because then that will impact you know the, uh, all the people who uh, he or she leads so a strong vision is important and a strong stable leader is also key for a strong local church uh, and yeah so that uh, is the first uh, important thing the second one as many of you pointed out the truth of god's word the truth of god's word has to be established in the heart and life of the leader but also in the heart and life of the church members so uh, we've talked about it right we said uh, that the um, the gospel message should not be compromised the whole counsel of god's word needs to be uh, established and here are a couple of uh, additional things you know we see paul when he uh, talks to the ephesian church he says that the word of god is able to build you up okay so what builds us up we are talking about a strong local church now in the physical when we are constructing a building uh, we will talk about the materials that are essential so if you have like good cement good bricks or whatever else you require to make a building then that will make the building strong but here we talk about spiritual aspects that make a church strong i think the one of the core construction uh, material here is the word of god and paul he told the ephesian church if you don't have the word of god then you cannot be built up okay you cannot be strong you cannot be established so that is the uh, one of the key things and we must allow that word to be uh, preached that word to be uh, spoken right consistently clearly uh, and uh, you know that must affect the lives of the people so uh, this word which is able to build people up you know that's the same word which is able to strengthen their spirits uh, ephesians 3:16 talks about it and when we want to mature people you know maturing people is more than just telling them hey live like this or live like that uh, because maturity also comes from the word of god and when we are consistently sowing the word of god and uh, you know in our own personal lives we know that when the word is sown when we respond to the word we live according to the word eventually maturity right uh, uh, you you meaning we grow we grow and that needs to happen in the life of every individual who is part of the church so the word of god so for a pastor or a, a leader you know we uh, go ahead and uh, emphasize the word of god now in the word of god we we know that you know um, okay so a little bit more about the word is coming up a little later okay i'll talk about pulpit ministry uh okay let me just jump to pulpit ministry here so the word of god is um, uh, very important and key uh, i'm on page 35 now i've skipped one section i'll come back to it uh, where because we're saying that the word will mature the believer how should the word be taught from the pulpit now pulpit ministry becomes very very important in the life of a church uh, because that's where you are releasing uh, releasing the logos and the rema uh, word of god so we must look at it as more than a filler because we all know about the common church format that every church has and you know a large proportion of that uh, time is taken up for some message now it's possible that you know we we uh, 
just share any word right every sunday just share any word and keep moving forward however if we have the goal in mind that we have to see people maturing then it is good to share that word in a balanced way okay so uh, here pastor shares his experience how he has uh, some focus areas that he keeps in mind while preparing the sunday messages so uh, he writes about covering christian life a christian life uh, uh, means developing your spiritual walk with god so that will involve developing your prayer life learning uh, the word of god understanding the word of god faith you know the doctrine uh, in the doctrines and uh, uh, you know things like believers authority who we are in christ so all these are important for a strong christian life but along with that you know uh, it's also important to preach life skills from time to time so life skills would involve um things like um you know decision making um i remember there were some nice inspirational messages about what is a vision uh what is focus how does focus help an individual moving to the next level enlarging uh, you know uh, dream again you know, topics like that which are inspirational which touch on you know uh, certain life skills so the the names that i mentioned could be helpful for professionals or college students because you know they they are motivated by it uh, and um, like for our uh, one of our college programs here i remember there's one topic called power habits you know it talks about how you can manage your time how you can uh, um, what else is a part of it yeah how you can manage your health how you can uh, manage all your resources right so that you can be very productive now that something like that is essential for a college student because otherwise you know yes they can be strong in prayer and they can be strong in faith and all of that but there are some of the other essentials that just help them navigate through everyday life so life skills now under life skills so many other things can be covered you know relationships the because uh the church is filled with people how can you relate rightly with people some some basic uh, things about that or you know marriage there are uh, married couples so uh, some basic life skills for marriage uh, and all that so from the pulpit when we address these matters along with the uh, issues that have to do with christian life it's very helpful just helping individuals in their everyday life right handling finances how do you manage your finances these are practical subjects and believers need to know these things okay so life skills would be the second category the third category is ministry so uh, we say that every believer is a minister of god uh, and that god has given the fivefold ministry offices for the saints to do the work of the ministry so saints or the every believer is supposed to do the work of the ministry now how can a believer do the work of the ministry if they don't understand you know what grace they have they have or what gifts are available right or uh, the gifts of the spirit how to operate in the gifts of the spirit okay uh, um, uh, so you know you i i hope you get my point serving is important but how to serve now sometimes the believer needs to be trained and equipped to do that as well even things like uh, ministering uh, a prophetic word to somebody how to do it how to do it in the right way praying with someone how to do it in the right way so there are some topics that we can touch on that help the believer minister well okay so what pastor shares is he says if you can see a a, a small uh, diagram there something like a pillar it has three uh, you know three strong pillars uh, one is christian life life skills ministry so you know, he writes about how he tries to balance the subjects between these three so uh, when when that is done it's helpful for the believer okay and he uh, constantly watches the list of sermons uh, and you know obviously being led by the spirit uh, but you know in in a wise way touch upon all these subjects so this will really help develop uh, an individual believer uh, now he also uh, shares about 
the fact that scripture says that god knows the end from the beginning so uh, with that in mind it is possible to know what messages should be preached um, over a certain period of time so uh, what we practice here at apc is generally pastor the beginning of the year he will give us a calendar and we kind of know like okay january we are going to touch on this subject february we're going to touch on this subject and you know march april we will uh, be doing this series so he uh, prays he, uh, he seeks the inspiration of the holy spirit to come up with the subject for the entire year so how does that help you know it just helps because um uh, uh, like one is preparation you, know, you can be well prepared uh, with what exactly you want to communicate to the congregation but at the same time as the church is growing like for example now here at apc you know, we have uh, several teams that coordinate for a sunday service so there is the worship team they have to be prepared with the uh, a song a set of songs that they they uh, want to sing then you have the media presentation team they have to be prepared with the powerpoint uh, or now you know it's even more uh, like because there's live stream uh, you know things like that so coordination and when when you're doing live stream you need the right graphics so our media team has to prepare the graphic graphics so unless they are given a good notice uh, well in advance it's difficult to coordinate uh, you know uh, among various teams so the general practice that we follow here is at least 2 to 3 months prior um, the teams are the teams are informed so like pastor sends out a pulpit schedule uh, for a couple of months and every team is copied uh or, you know on on that communication so the media team knows what to do oh okay fine we have to get this 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 ready uh, worship team knows what to do okay these are the topics we have to prepare this 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 they communicated to their team so when the church is growing and you have multiple teams uh, for us to coordinate we have to be very well prepared uh, and and that is something that um, we practice here uh, at apc and it is possible to hear from god um well in advance okay and, and it is helpful now uh, you know if if at all pulpit ministry is treated as okay we'll just share whatever is on our heart that sunday morning um now there's nothing wrong with it you know god can inspire you every time but uh, you see uh some of these things that i discussed right to 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 um uh, analyze whether we have covered different subjects to build up the congregation whether uh, you know we, uh, and also to see to it that things are done in an excellent way all that would be affected if we only um uh, you know kind of very spontaneously lead the pulpit time every sunday so this is this is something that uh, you know pastor shared here for our benefit and uh, i think it is helpful for for uh, pastors who prepare their pulpit schedule so now i'll i just go back to the section that i missed um so when we talk about um uh, you know christian life under christian life uh some things are important for the church and some things are part of the mission of the church so those subjects have to be covered because when we cover those subjects that's when the church can move in that direction and have that component uh you know as part of their um uh, as part of their church life so uh, what are those those five areas that must be addressed okay um uh, to addressed uh, by the pastor and, and uh, you know build up the congregation the first one would be evangelism and i think dinesh pointed it out and he said for a strong church we should reach out we should win souls because that is the purpose that you know the lord jesus has still left us here on the earth if we didn't have that uh, then there there is no mandate left but we are here to be salt and light we are here to engage with the world you know uh, all that we have discussed earlier so evangelism is very very important so the local church should be continually uh, encouraged to reach out to the unsaved 
Okay, so we can talk about this. We can preach about this. We can equip the believers uh, on how how you can share your faith uh, with your neighbors, with your family members in your workplace. Right, you equip the believer. So evangelism is a very very important uh, aspect of a uh, congregation's faith life. Then discipleship. Discipleship uh, has to do with um, developing Christ-like character. Because uh, everyone who follows a master should be like that master. Remember, Jesus said, uh, um, a servant should be at least, you know, at least a servant should be like his master. So we have to be like Jesus. So developing Christ-like character is another area of emphasis uh, when we talk, teach the congregation about Christian life. So under Christ-like character, you would uh, talk about the fruit of the spirit um, and you know you would touch upon the conduct what kind of conduct people should have um, and how they should uh, live uh, every day you know with integrity with faith and things like that so discipleship is another very very important thing to look into so when uh, we do that we know that the people are maturing okay prayer and worship so prayer and worship also is important to establish in the church. Now we know that God ministers in the midst of a praying and a worshiping congregation. So uh, again, to teach about it and also to make provision, equip the uh, church to flow in prayer, to flow in worship. Then fellowship. Fellowship is also another key aspect um, because you know the local church it's a community so how do you fellowship in the in a godly way how can we care for one another and what rupa pointed out she said church is like a family so how can we do that uh, in in a biblical way so that uh, area also is addressed and then equipping for ministry uh, again what uh, rupa shared she said identifying the grace over a person's life so we identify uh, we um, uh, we equip them, we uh, release them to fulfill the calling that God has for each and every individual. So when the church is able to step out, right, in all these five areas, there's a nice balance. There should be a good balance of evangelism, discipleship. See, evangelism is more outward looking. Discipleship is more inward looking. You can't have one or the other, right? If you constantly just say, oh, evangelism, evangelism is evangelism. And then the people are not uh, fed with the word of God to help them personally grow. What will happen? They'll burn out at some point because, yes, it's important to win souls. But it's also important to establish the believer in the truth of God's word. Otherwise, he will not have the strength right, to um, uh, step out and bring people into the kingdom so there's a nice balance outward looking inward looking then um, you know upward looking you could say prayer and worship is is uh, sort of upward looking fellowship where you kind of uh, you know you you look at others also in your community learn to grow together with them and uh, there is the aspect of equipping the believer for ministry so when all this is happening in a local church there's a there's a uh, there's a very um, how do you say like a complete and a wholesome way of developing a believer and when believers are developed in this manner you can have a strong local church okay so the word right now we discussed about the importance of uh, teaching uh, the people the word of God and building them up in the word of God and the word should touch on all these aspects okay so then the believer is well prepared that makes for a strong local church now coming to the next aspect that is important <laughs> excuse me a church where people are of one heart and one mind now we uh, see paul exhorting uh, the corinthian church where he says that you know i i just um, i plead with you that you all may speak the same thing that there be no divisions among you okay that you may be joined together in uh, one mind so that that is how he wanted the local church to be have a united heart and when you read about the early church 
know you you see that term one accord one accord one accord quite often so there is a unity of heart there's a unity of mind which the people had despite the diversities in you know all other ways so establishing that unity in the church is important now in, uh, jesus also when he preached he talked about the fact that a house which is divided it cannot stand and in the same way if we have a local church where there is a uh, uh, division you know people are up against one another and you know rupa used the word politics uh, okay so uh, that's again like an extreme but uh, otherwise you know there's there's a lot of uh, one person against the other the church will not stand for very long so we have to uh, be careful never to let divisions take root in the church and uh, as uh, pastors and leaders we'll see later on uh, that it's important for us to recognize like if if something seems to be happening uh, then you know we have to address that issue quickly because unless you you address it at the root like you know at at the smallest level it can work through the entire batch and uh, sort of pollute the community so uh, you know things like um, uh division strife backbiting slander so many things that can that can cause instability in the church community now one more aspect when it comes to being of one mind is that the leader them leaders themselves should lead in that manner you know if the leader uh, does not have that example if they are uh, trying to you know backbite control uh, you know do things which are not really godly uh, manipulate people uh, force people then sooner or later the people take on the character of the leader so it's unfortunate that you know it kind of is a part of the church because the leader is like that so it's important for the leader also to uh, be um, uh like you know walk with integrity and not engage in all this divide and rule manipulation kind of leading the people okay so uh oneness of mind oneness of heart makes for a strong local church all right now moving forward a church that is equipping and releasing people into their god appointed function okay so at the end of the day we said that every believer is a minister and here at apc Now that is like a, it's like a court, and it's, it's, it's said very, very often. Uh, so every believer is a minister because God has given the fivefold ministry offices for the equipping of the saints for their ministry. So uh, every believer needs to recognize their God-appointed function. Now it could be within the framework of the, uh, the church setting. or it could be uh, in some other uh, uh function outside of the church but we are also learning about kingdom right so in the kingdom of god basically in the kingdom of god we identify our function and uh, every believer is planted and serving over there uh, now that will be very very important so if every believer has to identify their function and serve in that area what would be the role of the leadership you know the leadership should have the discernment and the wisdom to recognize you know okay this individual in my church what is god calling this person to do what are the gifts that god has given this person so as a leader when i recognize i must nurture the individual mentor the individual in that direction right so we create opportunities we encourage right we encourage we lead people in that direction so in a church there can be people who have all kinds of uh, you know giftings different grace over different individuals but as leaders we must recognize okay every believer is a minister now what is the place for every believer how can i lead this believer to uh, walk into his or her calling but yes you know of course uh, they they have to make that decision and ultimately it is their um, response to god's calling on their lives but as a leader 
know we can facilitate we can lead and we must have that heart to serve them um uh, as god appoints them in their function uh, and you know they later on serve the church so leading people in the right way helping them know their uh, position okay so what else makes for a strong local church a uh, church which is relevant to the world it is in okay. now um paul he wrote you know he said that i have become everything to everyone like you know i i uh, um, uh, relate to people in a way that that person can understand so in that context again we've already said that we don't want to compromise the word of god but without compromising the word of god we should think about relevance because we might have uh, the word with us we might be doing all the right things but if we are not able to communicate in a way that people are uh, able to receive then we uh, kind of you know there's a great opportunity that we miss out on so the church needs to be relevant so this how will we address this maybe the church um it has an approach which is suitable uh, for that particular generation in terms of the kind of language that they use uh, you know the the kind of um, programs that they adopt uh, then uh, you know now recently you have so much technology and people are thinking about uh, the next generation technology so uh, why can't the you the church use that isn't it why can't the church use it because a lot of people are already on those uh, platforms uh, and if if the church says no we are only about um, you know fasting and prayer and we will only meet in this way we will only minister in this way we are missing out on those uh, you know the way jesus said like i'll make you fishers of men so we are not catching that fish okay but when we become relevant when we uh, when we are open to changes that don't affect the integrity of god's word or the power of god's word uh, then i think it's all right because all we're trying to do is to be relevant right uh, in our communication in the way we approach people and it only widens our scope it widens our horizon we are able to touch many more lives disciple more people for the kingdom equip more people for the kingdom and um, uh, you know extend the work of god so being relevant is also important for a church because if the church remains uh, like earlier remember we said the wine skin when we talked about the church structure how it changed from just the laity clergy kind of a style to more involvement of the saints in the work of the ministry so there has been a transformation there has been a change so in the same way uh, if we don't change now if you uh, look back at some of the old ways of doing church okay and the churches that are stuck in it the churches that say no this is how the building should be this is how the music should be this is how things should be somewhere they're not people are not able to relate to it anymore okay so uh, i mean i'm just giving you a very easy example to understand but you uh, you know what i mean so we must be open to uh, addressing uh, life issues life situations scenarios that that people are going through in a given period of time and you know uh, speak in their language uh, so you know like their com basically our communication should be relevant to them and when we do that we can affect more lives so be ready to change so a strong church will be ready to uh, uh, accommodate the changes then a church which is raising up leaders oh okay there are questions and uh, or comment rather uh, rupa says a leader is completely dependent on strong god's leading and guidance okay great yes rupa uh, all right uh, christopher you have a question please go ahead uh, this is you know, in relation to uh, relevance yes so, yes um, i think um, you know 
there has been there has been some update you know by ABC I think also pastor had done an update uh, also for us in um, uh, you know in the in the Bible college with regards to how um, EPC uh, was uh, you know assisted uh, during uh, during COVID you know for pastors as well as uh, for uh, some as you know some of the less fortunate um, um, in the community so uh, I think that was that was something that was uh, you know really uh, uh, you know, important to do, and uh, I think that that made uh, APC very relevant. The other, the other uh, area, uh, possibly, which is always you know quite sensitive, is the uh, is the area of um, you know church. Um, uh, I, I mean, church churches uh, intervening with uh, you know uh, uh, you know government policies. Uh, you know where. Uh, they have, um, uh, there are government policies. It could be specifically, uh, you know, in relation to uh, minorities. Uh, so, from an Indian perspective, I think uh, you know there are, uh, uh, you know, um, situations where uh, you know government has, uh, you know, you know have policies. There are, uh, you know, areas where, uh, you know, there are, uh, 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 you know. Uh, Things that have happened, which you know, which can affect uh, minorities. Uh, that is where is one, and the other area, of course, is um, how they can influence uh, governments to you know, to uh, to uh, move towards a more uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, religious uh, approach to life, and how you know how they are, how they can uh, uh, develop uh, spiritual uh, you know spirituality within uh, for, you know for policies as well as you know how. How the government can can influence that. So I just wanted to bring that point up, and you know, wanted to get your your understanding on your view on this. Sure. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. Um, yeah, those are uh, very important subjects, uh, and glad that you know APC could uh, do something about the COVID situation uh, and address the needs of the people at the right time. Uh, so thank God for COVID relief. Now coming to the uh, the next uh, point that you brought up about um, the church being relevant uh, to the minority communities and the issues that they are going through, right? And influencing government policy. Uh, see, uh, I think when you say the church, like you really have to define what are you what, what do you mean by that? Now, the church, the people of God, okay, the kingdom of God uh, should affect the the government, the policies, and uh, uh, you know the decisions, even when it comes to minority communities, so that we see the uh, justice of God established in the lives of the people. Now, having said that, uh, if we are talking about a local church, okay, influencing government policy, how does that look? Now, it may not necessarily look like, you know, uh, I'm just giving a random name, like a Grace Faith Church. Grace Faith Church having uh, a representative in the legislative assembly. Okay, uh, it may not look like that, or it may not look like okay, Grace Faith Church uh, making a policy change. It may not necessarily look like that, but you know, when we are maturing believers, they make the difference. Okay, uh, now one danger with the church getting so um, you know uh, associating with the government and the policy making in that way, uh, the danger is that. You know the 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 government affects the church because now we like like the local church uh, needs to be moved according to the vision that God has given the local church. We don't want any government influencing, uh, you know, the local church, which is likely to happen when you tie up, uh, you know, in in this manner with the uh, uh, you know government structures in a certain city. Uh, however, if we are able to influence without getting influenced, right? Without our vision being influenced, that would be a better way to make a difference. And uh, just from what I know, Christopher, I know so many people 
uh, uh, like in the Christian circle here in Bangalore, and even in APC. In fact, uh, uh, I don't I don't remember how many uh, months ago this was, but one of the lawyers uh, from uh, one, she worships at one of our locations, and she has a heart for justice. She has a heart for. Uh, you know minority communities uh, and she was praying for a particular license and permission from the government to affect exactly what you're talking about so you see uh, as an individual who's part of the church she's making a very big difference like she's out there fighting for the rights of of people and i know of so many other people who are doing this like out there on the front lines and they are part of uh, apc church other churches. So is the kingdom of God uh, addressing these matters? I think yes. Uh, should it address uh, in, a, in, a, in a stronger, more powerful way? I think yes. You know, there's, there's um, uh, miles to go, right? Uh, but there is a danger if we, if we influence government policies in in such a way like the structure we uh, adopt uh, where the government is able to influence us okay and i think in the past this has happened institutionalization of church you will read about this in church history how um, there were there were kings and kingdoms they kind of took over the church and then the church didn't have any say the church had to do what the government was telling them to do right so so I, I mean, I'm just painting. I'm just sharing all my thoughts with you. I hope uh, it's going somewhere and it makes some difference. Uh, yes, Christopher. Okay, okay. Uh, Christopher, is that okay? Most of the points. And huh. uh, I think there is also, you know, there are there are there are times when you know um, there are uh, uh, you know, policies or uh, decisions that are made, and um, mm -hmm. um, I I you know this, I, again this is just you know what you hear sometimes in news, but there are there have been churches and uh, pastors who have been you know really against them, and you know they have really sort of you know uh, stood up against uh, you know. Uh, the, the you know the current government, so it's mm. it's um, it's more about you know uh, trying to uh, you know uh, you know in a sense fight against a certain policy or, or a certain decision that is made. So mm. uh, uh, yeah. So again, uh, you know the way it is done and how it is done. I mean, yeah. so, you know, sometimes can be questionable, but I, I just thought I'll just raise that point over there. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, Christopher. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, we must uh, be an influence, but how we do it, uh, that has to be done with a lot of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Nice discussions, everyone. Uh, let's uh, go for a break. We'll come back and pick up where we've stopped.